Maybe you shouldn't have bought your kid that Range Rover. Maybe you should have, you know, just thought about it a little while because we see why your kid's a Whenever somebody asks me, what do you do? I mean, my first inclination is to laugh, <laughs> you know? No one's parents look down at the crib of their newborn child and says, God, I wish my son or daughter grows up to be a parking lot attendant. If this wasn't just a job, this is a holy mission. We are going to park the car. We will park them on the beaches. We will park them on the hillsides. We will park them until there are none to be parked. And so I'm trying to slam his head into the steering wheel. That was the moment when I realized that maybe I had to adopt a different approach. This is my job. This is how I make my money. You know, I don't know what you do for a living, but I mean, you owe me nine dollars right now. It's more than a parking lot there. The way it's set up, like you're not just taking money, like you're in some sort of battle with humanity or something. I was like, this is what's wrong with the world. You got a sports car with an automatic transmission. And you've just watched Megan Ekman's critically acclaimed feature-length documentary, The Parking Lot Movie. That is awesome. Thank you. Welcome to the show, Megan. Thanks for having me. I am so um, <laughs> amazed by this film because it's a parking lot. What, can, how can you possibly make a film about a parking lot? And you did, and it was brilliant. You know, you can, you can make a documentary about a blade of grass growing and make it interesting because I think if you stare at anything long enough, you can really find meaning out of it. And I think that's what makes this documentary really special for people is because they come in with really low expectations <laughs> and kind of surprise them. But um, it's also more challenging, you know, I think art is made from limitations. Oh. Well, how did you start this documentary? Uh, well, I started when I had just moved back to Charlottesville from New York, and a friend of mine who worked in this parking lot suggested to a room full of people that someone should make a documentary about the parking lot where he worked. And um, I said I would, and I just, I think he was really surprised because the next day I showed up with my video <laughs> camera and said, here I am, I'm ready to make this movie that you said is so great. <laughs> and um, I just started recording, and immediately it was hilarious cars were coming in and not knowing you had to take a ticket for the gate arm to come up, um, parking in the, the spaces that say no parking, and the whole time the attendants were having a ball just making fun of everyone who was parking in the lot. Yeah. So um, immediately it just became this contagious energy. You just saw that it really was deserving of a movie. Were you looking for a documentary to shoot? I mean, was, is, is that why it struck you, or was it just spontaneous? An That's idea? a good question. I um, was a professional video editor in Manhattan, and I was at the point in my career where I was ready to do my own project and felt like I had something to say. Um, and I felt like these parking lot attendants really articulated what I was feeling at that time in my life. This in-between time where, and I call this movie kind of a, uh, generation in crisis. It's like a voice of the Gen X, you know, because before that you had um, a certain generation where they knew what they were going to do with their lives and they followed this set path. And mm -hmm. I think Gen X, it's, uh, you don't really, you don't really buy into the system and you're in this holding pattern and you don't, you don't really believe in what the culture tells you to believe in. And so I think that's what those guys were able to speak to, is that sentiment. And I felt that really strongly at that time. I just left a career in New York and was looking for my place in the world, too. And, and so what they were saying really resonated with me. How, how many hours of footage did you actually have? Uh, I think by the end I had about 140 hours of footage. Wow. Uh, it sounds like a lot, but I know people who have 400, 500 hours for documentaries. Right. You know, in this digital age, you can just keep filming forever. Right. Um, with the parking lot, you know, I had to sit there with my camera on record and just wait it out. Were you editing it as you went? So you, did you have it all formatted you in your an mind? Because you were an editor. Right. This is where my background in editing really came through. Because day one, I went back and loaded on the computer and started trying to edit it. And it was funny because when I started making this movie, I didn't really know how to make a movie. 
So I um, was zooming in a lot, and the camera was all shaky, and the footage just looked horrible. This was your first movie? First feature. As a cinematographer? Yeah, no, I had no idea how to film. Wow! Um, but the good thing about being an editor is I got to see what worked and what didn't, because I was like, oh, well, when I zoom in, that's not working. So um, I really learned how to compose and frame a shot just by looking at it and trying to piece it together. So by the, uh, by the end, I had, a, I had a good feel for what looked good. That is brilliant. Um, I, and I just want to touch back on what you were saying before about the generation, the Gen X, because John and I were just talking about that in our, in our intro, about people that actually work outside the box and they do what they have to to pursue their passions or to figure out what they want as opposed to what other people want. And that's what really struck me about the film, uh, were the expectations and assumptions of the Parkers that they put on the parking attendants, and that these people were actually very intelligent people. They weren't just sort of down and outs. What did you learn from these guys, these philosophers and these artists? And Well, it's hard to say exactly what I learned. It's kind of in the movie uh, what I learned. But I felt like I got an education just from knowing these guys. They're all so intelligent and well-spoken that I felt like I was going to grad school just <laughs> by virtue of interviewing them. <laughs> Um, so I came out of there just a little bit more thoughtful about the roles of society and how we interact with each other. Yeah. It really does touch on a lot of things. And it, one, one thing that really struck me was how we take things that are so petty. They seem so petty, but when you're in that moment, they are the largest things that you can deal with. Like 40 cents. Like 40 like, cents. Right, the, the, the fee for parking. Um, yeah, it's funny because I, since this movie has been on Netflix, uh, I've been getting an amazing, amazing response. And I get a lot of emails from people who work in the service sector, and they really relate. Um, all kinds of people uh, write me and say, you just captured my job, you know? And it, they're not parking lot tents, they're working it's in the I was a bartender and you totally yeah. captured it. You become so fixed on the stupidest things and the wrong things. And it really takes, you either walk away from your job, just like they talk about, you either walk away from it or you figure you out how to, deal how, with it. how to cope with yeah. it. Yeah, it's funny because um, I'm not really trying to say one party is right or another is right no. because it's funny that the parking lot tents are judging as well as being judged. So there yes. is it is more complex than just you know it's not just one way. No, right. and there was one. There was two. Well, there's so many poignant parts, but one of the guys can't remember his name said that he grew up there. He learned how to be a person there, mm -hmm. and that's someone that obviously took a very positive thing out of it. And someone else said, you know, you you learn when to. Pick your, you pick your battles, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not your job to, to sort of make the point to somebody or, or um, exact revenge or teach them yeah. a lesson. Yeah, you move beyond you move seeing, beyond. towards the end of the movie, there's a song, Black and White, Seeing the World in Black and White, and you, you, I think that's the phase they go through is they have a system of parking lot justice where, you know, they see the world in these very rigid terms. And that's part of adolescence and growing up. And then eventually they're ready to move on and accept that not everything is quite so delineated in that Black way. Black and white, 